Blessing back with me again this week. He's come back to watch and see what we're doing. Now, I saw something really funny this week. I saw a TikTok video, and the lady in the TikTok video made a salted caramel baked cheesecake, and she did it in 17 seconds. I thought, wow, that was quick. I'd like to be able to do something like that so quickly. So I thought, for today, I'm going to make something for you. And let's see if I can do it just as quickly. So underneath my tea towel, I've got all my ingredients. This reminds me a little bit of a Great British Bake Off. Here we go. So I'm going to use a gingerbread mix because I couldn't get flour in the supermarket. Now it says here on the front of the cover, just add butter, water and golden syrup. So let's start. I'll put that in the bowl. And then I need to add, oh, here we go here. I've got my butter. Put that in the bowl and some water. Put that in the bowl too. And finally, my golden syrup. Now, that was even quicker than 17 seconds. And look what I've made. Some gingerbread then. Really, I was being a little bit silly. I followed the front of the packet. I didn't read the back of the packet where it says, you need to measure out your butter and put the right amount in. And you need to measure out your water and put in the right amount. And you need to measure out your golden syrup and put in the right amount. And then you mix it. You cut it out into gingerbread men shapes. And then you bake it on a tree in the oven. I didn't follow any of those instructions. Now, some people do follow instructions and they follow them really well. And the story we're going to think about helps us think about why we do church the way we do it now. Now back just after Jesus had died and risen again, his followers were trying to find a new way of being and they were following the directions given by Jesus. They were showing how much Jesus loved them and they were loving each other and their neighbours and other people. But they were also doing something 
that Jesus had taught them how to do. They were praying regularly and praying together regularly. They were reading what scriptures they had and they were listening to other people reading the scriptures to them. When they met up together, they would break bread, the same as we do now for communion. This is all the same as what we do for church when we meet all together. We read the Bible. We pray together. We talk about what we've learned. And every so often, we break bread and have communion. This is what Jesus wanted us to do. And he wanted us to follow the way he was teaching us. Now just now, we can't go to church. And we can't meet together. So instead, we're being a bit like the original followers of Christianity. The original followers of Jesus. We are having our special services at home. We're meeting together, but apart. We're meeting together in our own homes with our own close family. We're reading the Bible and finding out more about Jesus. We're praying together and we're having meals together. And while church looks a little bit different just now, it won't be long before we are back together. And we can remember this time, the time when we were together at home and we had church at home and we learned more about Jesus at home. Let's say a little prayer now and at the end of our prayer we'll say the Lord's Prayer together too. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your instructions. Thank you for showing us how to be church. And thank you for helping us to be church just now. Thank you, Father, for your guidance and your help and your many blessings you are giving to us just now. Thank you for showing us the way. And thank you for teaching us how to be more like Jesus. Help us this week when we find things hard. Help us not to be grumpy or sad or miserable or upset. Help us to help our big people and our families as much as we can. <clears throat> Thank you for being with us every day and helping us to achieve this. Let's continue praying in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you. And I hope if you try some bacon, you follow the instructions this week. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>
Special welcome for anyone visiting St Kentigern's today. We hope you enjoy worshipping with us. Today we have John taking part as well as Anne. Our first prayer has responses in it. You will see the words of the prayer come up on the screen and the darker words are the ones which you join in with if you choose to. There will be also a short time of silence during the prayer for your own prayers. So, let us approach our God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we have come together in the name of Christ. We come to bow our heads, to lift up our hearts and to offer you our praise. We come to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, to enthrone him in our lives and to offer him our commitment. We come to seek his will, to hear his word and receive his blessing. Loving God, we praise you for all you have done through Christ, his revelation of your great love and glory his obedience and faithfulness even to the cross itself, his victory over death and exaltation to your side, his promise to come again as King of kings and Lord of lords. Help us as we worship to recognise Christ is with us, each in our own homes, drawing us together. Help us to glimpse your glory through him, to hear his voice through this service, to feel his love through our fellowship, and to see more clearly where we can serve him in the needs of our world. Hear us as we ask forgiveness, each as we need to, for all we have said and done which saddens you. Help us to bear his name faithfully and live each day to the glory of his name. Amen. Our first reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and I read from the NIV Bible. The Fellowship of the Believers They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God 
and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And our second reading is from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. And it's the parable of the shepherd. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person because they do not know his voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he meant. So Jesus said again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All others who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever comes to me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May these words enable your word to be heard in our hearts today. Amen. We're going to concentrate on the passage in Acts, Acts 2, 42 to 47, and look at what the early church were doing and the results they got, and compare that to what's going on with us just now and the results we might get. Right at the beginning, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. These people had heard the voice of the shepherd and they wanted to follow. They wanted to learn, to know what he had to say. Some of them may only have heard him once or heard from a friend. Some may have heard him several times or see him heal, but they wanted to know more and the apostles had been with him all the time and so they wanted to hear what they had to say. They were eager for the word of God. Are we eager for the word of God today? Do we try and hear as much as we can of Jesus' teaching? Well, there's a lot of services out there just now, and there are quite a number of people who are listening not just to their own service, but to quite a number on a Sunday or even during the week. And they're hearing different interpretations or different teaching, and they're seeing different ways to worship. So they are learning, they're praising God through the hymns, and they are growing in their knowledge and their faith. That can't be bad. And then it says that the early church had fellowship. They knew the importance of fellowship. They wanted to be a family. They wanted to have an identity associated with them and they wanted to learn from each other. They wanted people to see who they were and how they behaved and they needed each other for they were a small group amidst many others. So how about us? How are we getting on with fellowship? Well, that is a bit difficult just now because we're not actually allowed to be together. But we are trying our best. We know it's important. And so from the beginning, we've tried to think of ways that we can share fellowship. And so we put on these services. We put on the daily thoughts. And then, of course, we realised some people couldn't access any of that. So we started printing the daily thoughts as well and sending them out. 
and we have a monthly magazine instead of a three monthly one. We're phoning every week to everybody in the congregation just to keep together. And I know some of you are phoning a lot in between as well just to keep up that fellowship. So I think we're doing quite well with fellowship. We certainly know it's important and we are trying to keep together and be identified as Christians. Then it says something which is open to interpretation. It says they broke bread together. Now, we might think that means take communion all the time, but it probably doesn't. They would have communion. They would remember Jesus at times. But breaking bread together, the Greek just means eating together. So they probably did meet in different ways together. It certainly says they met in each other's houses and they enjoyed a meal together. That was important for fellowship as well and just acceptance of each other. So what do we do about breaking bread together? Well, again, we can't get together. But it's amazing what you can manage. I know there are some young people who are arranging in an evening, say, to meet together by Zoom at the same time and have their pizza and beer or whatever it is they want at the same time and have a chat and just have fellowship together. And we're doing our best. The young people are getting together in Zoom for quizzes and discussions. We're trying to open up uh, a communion. There was, sorry, there was a communion service on Easter Sunday and a Monday Thursday service if you wish to go and share communion. So that was possible. And you can be sure that when we come back together, there will be a celebratory meal with, it, with everyone who can come. And something you might not think about is that there is more eating together going on in families than there usually is because families are together more there they are in the house not able to get out dad's working from home can't be out late now working he's there mum's working from home she's there all the time children are in the house so they're all there at meal time and able to share that meal together which is important and they prayed together. They knew the importance of prayer. It mattered to be in close touch with God. And they were praying a lot. They had the example of Jesus. He needed to pray. And if he needed to pray, then they certainly did. So what are we doing? Are we praying a lot? Well, I'm quite sure you are praying a lot. You are praying for people whom you know and want to be kept safe. You are praying for people who are ill. You are probably play, praying for the whole community, the whole country, the whole world. You're praying for medics and other people who are in the front line. We are praying a lot. And hopefully we are coming closer to God through that. And then we have our prayer chain through email. If anyone wants something prayed about by a large number of people, they can ask Anne. And we've started up our little prayer group. And we are willing to listen and, and to, to pray for anyone who perhaps isn't quite ready for everyone to know their problem, but would like prayer from a small group. And we'll pray for all that's going on that we feel it's important to pray about. We've added an extra layer to our prayer. So we are doing our best. Yes, we are trying. We are in touch with God and that's important. And hopefully we are praising him as well as we do that and saying thank you for all that we do have. And the fact that we are all here and well today is one thing to say thank you for. So all these things and more that the disciples were doing and the early church was doing. So what was the result? What happened? Well, there's some amazing sentences here. People were filled with awe. The people round about the early Christians saw how 
devoted they were, how good they were to each other, how they were a real group, and how loyal they were. And they were amazed. They saw them taking uh, worship each Sunday, or sorry, each Sabbath, in the temple forecourt. And not only that, they were there every day. And they were listening to the apostles and learning. So they were very public in their worship. So, what do we do? Are we getting a good press? Well, we are. Not usually, but we are just now. One of the government updates was all about churches or faith groups. Yes, it was about Ramadan to a large extent and the fact that people shouldn't get together for their meal at the end of Ramadan. But all faith groups were being praised for the way in which they were helping and doing good and in the community and amongst each other. And I think there is a general recognition that church groups are doing a good job. So we have a better press than we usually do have. Then there is something quite amazing that we might find difficult to think could happen today. It says that there were signs and wonders. The disciples were healing, performing miracles. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, when did you last see a sign and wonder or see a miracle? Well, you might not think you have. But God is working in our world today. These people were very close to God and God enabled them. And where we are close to God, then God can work through us or through others to answer our prayer request. Do we believe with the enthusiasm and the certainty that these early Christians did? Could these things happen today? Well, why not? If people believe God can do, he will do it. That's not my interpretation. That's the words of William Barclay in his book on Acts. If we believe God can do something, he will do something. He is answering prayer. A few weeks ago, I phoned a friend and found her in quite a state. Her family were all at loggerheads. Oh, it was just awful, all the things that were going on. And because she was shut in, she couldn't go and do anything about it and talk to them and calm them down. So I prayed with her on the phone. And I did put it to the prayer group in Stewarton. And I phoned her the next week. And she was like a different person. I said, um, how are your family? Great, she said. They've all calmed down. They're all talking to each other. And none of the aggro that they had before. Oh, right. Did someone go and talk to them? No, she said. Nobody went and talked to them. They just all seemed to to calm down and start getting on. And then she said, and it was not at prompting, it's the prayer that did it. You prayed and your group prayed and God's done something. It's amazing. And believe me, given what had been going on before, that was a miracle. God will answer prayer. He can still create miracles in this day. And age. We mustn't think that all that was left behind us with the early Christians. And there was one other thing, one other result we have to mention, and that comes right at the end of the reading. The Lord added to their number daily. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had new people coming every day to want to know about God and and Jesus, and join the church, perhaps? At the moment, it's almost inconceivable, but is it? Why, why should it not be? If God is working amongst us, will he not bring others to know too? Our worship is so much more public. People are listening to it who don't usually go to church. Will there be some who come back who maybe haven't been at church for a long time? Or some who just come to find out? Or because they have 
been impressed by the way that Christians have behaved just now. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Will we see revival when we get back to church? Is it happening just now? Is the world changing? Well, let's continue doing all we're doing. Let's keep learning and being eager for the Word of God. Let's try to be together as much as we can. Let's share what we can with food to each other as well as in our own houses, as some people are doing. Let's keep praying, praying hard, praying with belief. And let's do all we can to help others, because that's important too. We maybe don't give away our property and sell our property and, and, and give that to the poor, but there is a lot to be contributed. Look at the money top Captain Tom wrote, um, raised. How many people contributed to that? And that's all good too. But above all, keep believing. And if we believe, God will do. This is the time to help change the world. It's the time to bring others to follow the shepherd. The early Christians saw thousands added to their number. They created the first revival and their faithfulness and desire to know Christ were paramount. So can we create revival today? Let us approach God's throne of grace in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are challenging us in our solitude to follow you into new paths, new ways to live and care, new ways to worship you. When we get tired or worried, remind us that you can bring change and hope out of the most seemingly hopeless situations so that we may emerge with strengthened faith. Help us by your Spirit to hear your word in Scripture and to follow your way in our lives, that we choose hope over fear, that we choose light, not darkness, that we choose life and not death, that we turn to you for our salvation. Grant us, your church, courage to reveal your glory in the way we live. And we ask that you keep reminding us that we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. Encourage and help us all to be patient and kind, strengthened by your power and firm in our faith, because we are your people, Lord, giving and loving, wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, and whenever you call us. Heavenly Father, you are the source and goal of all creation, but the world feels strange just now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Others are worried for their family and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. We pray also for the doctors and nurses, the support staff and scientists, and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. We pray for those who are in positions of leadership in our nation, May they take often impossible decisions with compassion, humility and wisdom. Father, we know that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. We offer these words of prayer through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, please be safe, and remember there are lots of people uh, out there who can help, including me, for any council-related matters. So please contact me any time. And now the blessing after which we will sing uh, Mission Praise 1008, The Lord's My Shepherd. That's Mission Praise 1008. May the grace of Christ attend us. The love of God surround us. 
The Holy Spirit keep us this day and forevermore. Amen.